Well, hello there, fellow packers. Today we're talking shoes, the bane of every carry-on traveler's existence. The one thing that throws a wrench in an otherwise perfectly packed suitcase. When you're traveling, there's almost nothing more important than having good shoes. Because if your feet are killing you, then you won't be traveling anywhere besides around the inside of your hotel room and your trip will be ruined. Trust me, I know from experience. In this video, I'm showing you my latest shoe discovery that has completely changed the game when it comes to deciding on which shoes to put in my travel capsule for maximum versatility, as well as the actual packing of the shoes in the suitcase, because that can be quite a challenge when you're working with irregularly shaped shoes, aka heels. I'm talking about passion footwear, and no, this video is not sponsored. I just love the shoes and I want to share them. Here's everything you need to know about how the shoes work, what I think of them, plus the laundry list of people I think could benefit from them, and finally, how I pack and style them for maximum style usability. If you like these types of videos, please subscribe if you haven't already, hit the thumbs up button, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future rants, rambles, or recommendations. I own two pairs of passion shoes currently. This is the Dior C in coal leather, and this is the Booty in walnut knit. I also own four heel kits, and they include the one and a half inch block in walnut, the three inch walnut block, the three inch black rhinestone, and the four inch sand rhinestone. And of course, a pair of black flat caps. What makes these shoes special is that they are a pair of heels and flats in one shoe, and they actually work. That is the incredible part. When you need heels, passions are beautiful and versatile heels. Versatile being the key word here, and I'll elaborate more on that in a bit. And when you need a flat, all you have to do is remove the heel and sole support from the bottom of the shoe, pop in the flat cap to protect the heel mechanism, put on the shoes as normal, and your body weight being on the shoe will flatten out the sole, and they'll just work as regular comfortable flats. The soles are made out of a very flexible sneaker material, which not only allows them to completely flatten out when your body weight is on them, but it also makes them very supportive and comfortable. The sole is molded to bounce back to its heel shape when it's not in heel mode, but I think that makes it very easy to reinsert the Stello sole support so that when you do want to convert it into heel mode, you don't have to like fight with it to get it back into this heel shape. Not to mention, it also does a good job of providing sole support when the shoe is in flat mode. A lot of regular sandals are very, very flat and have practically no arch support. So your feet start hurting even when you're wearing a shoe that is supposed to be comfortable. But these basically have built-in arch support, which is awesome. They're comfortable as heels, as comfortable as heels can be, but when your feet are tired of being in heels or just didn't wanna be in heels in the first place, they transform into flats that are more comfortable than regular flats even are. They are truly legitimate heels and legitimate flats. They're not just heels that can awkwardly smush down into a flat in a fashion emergency. They are actually good flats that are enjoyable to wear as flats. I really have no more words to describe such perfection. But wait, it gets even better. Not only are passion shoes two in one, so one pair of flats and one pair of heels, but they can also be this pair of heels or this pair of heels, or this pair of heels. The heel kits are completely interchangeable, so you can pair any heel with any shoe to get pretty much infinite customized looks. When you go to Passion's website and select a shoe style, you'll see the shoe automatically paired with color matched heels in the four default options, which are a four inch block, a three inch block, a four inch stiletto and a three inch stiletto. But regardless of what you order, all of the heel kits come separately packaged from the shoe upper. So you can really purchase any heels to go with any shoe. So you don't need to feel limited to the pairings that you see listed on the website. What I like to do is select the shoe that I want and then I scroll all the way to the bottom of the shoe page where there's a listing for a zero inch flat. This is a listing just to purchase the shoe itself and it doesn't come with any pre-selected heel kit. So I like to add that to my cart and then I will go into the heel section separately and select the heels that I want. I just like to do this because for me, it helps me keep track of which heels and which uppers I have since they're all interchangeable, like I don't wanna be buying duplicates. The price does come out the same. There is no discount for purchasing any of their pre-selected pairings. Um, some of the heels cost more than others and of course shoes are different prices, 
but it, it works out the same, I promise. I tried it with all sorts of heel pairings and the price always does come out the same whether you add the heel to the card separately or if you pick one of their pairings. Several years ago, I wore a pair of generic Dior say like shoes to my brother's wedding and they were great. They were very comfy. I walked all around New York in them and ever since I've wanted to get a similar pair in black just to have because I like the style. Well, that was almost five years ago now and up until a few weeks ago when the coal leather Dior say that I had been eyeing since the end of last year came back into stock, I had still not purchased any Dior says. I kid you not, I am not making this up for the video, but the reason, one of the reasons why I never purchased anything was because I couldn't decide on what kind of heel I wanted. I couldn't decide if I wanted to get something lower that would be more usable for more occasions but would feel less special or if I wanted to get something higher that would be less usable but would feel more special when I did want to wear it, I just couldn't decide. But thanks to passion, that concern is no longer a thing because I can just buy whatever heel I want and throw it on the same shoe and I have tons of shoes. I don't have to worry about which heel I want to get ever again. So who needs these shoes? Watch any one bag or carry on packing video and you'll almost always hear two points. The first thing is to select items that have multiple uses because the more uses you can get out of your items, the less items you need to pack. The second thing is to get rid of any just in case items. Heels are arguably a just in case item. Even if you do end up wearing them, it's not like you would have died without them, but they make you feel some kind of way and so you like wearing them. On the other hand, I would say that a second pair of walkable shoes is kind of a necessity. Your first pair could get wet and that's miserable. And I find that my feet really do just feel better when I have something different I can change into. So finally, your second pair of walkable shoes and your heels are the same shoe. So that way, neither has to be sacrificed for the other, even if you're packing light. Number two is people who have limited closet space. Like I said before, I like talking about traveling, but I'm not constantly traveling. I do a handful of trips a year, and the rest of the year, I am just chilling at home, trying to make the best use of my travel items, even at home. Shoes take up a lot of space. We know this. We've all run out of shoe storage at one point or another. And as was the issue with my Dior say story earlier, what we're really after is often just a different kind of vibe that is better suited to the occasion and not necessarily a whole new shoe. Let's take the Passion Dior say for example. The black leather Dior say with a matching three inch block, I would say looks professional and basic. Nothing too special. You get invited to a company party and you want a shoe that is a bit more dressed up, but nothing outrageous and inappropriate for a work event. Four inch stiletto, still a classic silhouette, but elevated for evening. Now you're invited to a wedding. It's the ninth one this year and you don't have space or money for any more shoes. Never fear, the four inch gold stiletto is here. Okay, lame, I'll stop it now. Or maybe you want something just not quite so high so you can easily dance the night away with your shoes on. There's a three inch stiletto for that. Or maybe the ceremony is outside and you need a yard appropriate heel. There are tons of fun and decorative three inch blocks. All of these looks and you only need to store essentially one pair of shoes, plus maybe a Lazy Susan or a spice rack for all of your extra heel kits. The third person who may want passions is the person who is trying to reduce fashion waste. Shoes tend to fall into two categories, in my opinion. The first being the everyday shoes and the second being the special occasion shoes that you wear once or twice a year or worse once. It just makes sense to own a few pairs of classic shoe styles that are comfortable and usable in everyday life, but that can be easily decorated, dressed up, and made to feel special for when those special occasions do arise. Swapping out the heel kits to elevate your everyday shoes is a cost-effective, space-effective, and just less wasteful way of elevating your shoes and feeling fancy when you need to. Way better than purchasing a million pairs of shoes that you'll have to store and never wear again. Overall, the quality of the shoes is really nice, but I would like to point out a few issues that I've had. So I think the shoe upper is really nicely constructed. All of the stitching is aligned and everything just feels really nice. Overall, good attention to detail. However, the heel kits, <laughs> 
mainly the decorative ones, are noticeably different quality than the shoe uppers. Maybe it's because the factory is inexperienced in making heel kits and they are very experienced in making shoes. I don't know what it is, but the attention to detail on the heel kits is hit or miss in some cases. The decorative heels are wrapped in a fabric and they have the rhinestone overlay glued on top of it. As you can see, the fabric could have been cut straighter in some places the rhinestone overlay could be straighter and things aren't perfectly centered around the release button. Also, when I unboxed my first pair of walnut three inch blocks, the gold foil on the button was chipping off as I unboxed it and handled it for the first time. And as I practiced putting it on and off the booty, every time I handle this particular heel, more gold <laughs> foil flakes off. So pretty soon there's just gonna be none left. Not a huge deal. It's not like anybody is really looking that closely at your heel but they're just little things and I know it's happening. It could be a fluke, but for me, it kind of put me off purchasing any of the gold foil metallic accessories. There is also a break-in period that lasts a couple of wears depending on the shoe. And until they're fully broken in, they do look and feel a bit odd. For me, the Dior Says took about eight to 10 hours of wear for them to really feel normal, <laughs> like when I was wearing them in flat mode. The booties took longer, maybe 15 hours of wear until it got to the point where I didn't feel like I needed to like flex my toes down in order to not have that like elfish look. But don't worry, I promise they do break in before long and they will look and feel totally normal. Just know that they will be a little funny on the first wear don't be afraid, don't write them off immediately. I promise they will get better, but just make sure that you do have time to break them in before you really need to wear them to an event where you're going to be seen and if you're gonna feel self-conscious that your shoes look a little bit elfish, just know that they do take time to break in and a lot that time. Finally, I wouldn't say that changing the heels is difficult, but if you've seen the founder Haley's TikToks, she makes it look just so effortless. She, she does mention that she has been doing this for like seven years, so she is really a pro at changing the heels at this point, but she does it like standing and I just can't do it. I have only had my, from my first pair of passions, about four months, so I am not an expert at changing the heels. It takes a little bit of skill to get it to that point, I guess, but I wouldn't say it's a struggle. I do need to sit down and sometimes take off the shoe to, in order to like really get it on there. Besides just my lack of grace and my overall clumsiness, I don't find it that hard to change the heels, but it's not like, whew, like do it standing. Um, so it's kind of in the middle. In general, I find the one and a half inch block to be the most difficult because it doesn't have the release button like the other ones do. So you have to really just like grip it and jam it. But besides that, it's fine. For a normal travel capsule, I'll usually pack three or four total footwear options. Two are non-negotiables and two are wild card choices based on the vibe I'm going for for the trip. So in general, my shoe capsule looks like this. My first non-negotiable shoes are my Hoka athletic sneakers. I wear these in transit because they're the bulkiest, but they're also just the most comfortable sneakers I've ever used. And so I don't go anywhere without them. My second non-negotiable is my slippers. I use these for showering, walking around the room at night, or if I'm going swimming. Next, I have my one or two wildcard options. I have a few favorite shoes that may be included here depending on the needs of the trip, but I can almost guarantee that these days, passions will be at least one of the options. Even if I have only three literal shoes, I could actually have four or five different pairs of shoes depending on how many heel kits I pack. So they help me fill a gap in my travel capsule that that is otherwise a conundrum to fill. Do I pack heels in case I wanna wear them? Which I probably won't, but what if I do? Or should I skip the heels and hope I don't wanna wear them? But if I do wanna wear them, I'll just wear my roughly tibas and pretend they're dinner shoes. That's the one I went with for my Alaska cruise last summer. And to be honest, while we we're on the ship, I wished I had packed a pair of heels. I, re I kind of did <laughs> want to dress up, but I didn't have any heels. What I had was my roughly tibas. So those were my dinner shoes. You can see the conundrum in this. I've talked before about how I like to have my clothing capsule 
be able to cover my three basic outfit styles, which are everyday casual, dressier, and athleisure. The same goes for the shoes. My goal is to make sure that I have appropriate shoes for each of these categories. The Hulkas and slippers take care of the athleisure, so that leaves me with one or two choices for everyday casual and dressier. One pair of fashions with one heel kit and one flat option are perfect for my dressier option. I can have different levels of dressy depending on whether I want to wear a heel or not. The other shoe option will often be a pair of white van sneakers or my Tiva depending on activities, but sometimes I could throw in a second pair of passions if I'm feeling extra fancy for that trip. The only really rule is that whatever I pack has to be weather appropriate for where I'm going. All of my travel shoe options are relatively neutral. I don't bother packing colorful or printed shoes because they're just limiting in what they can match. Versatility is the most important thing when you only have a few options. So that is basically all I do for shoes when traveling. I don't harbor many options and they're all very neutral and my passions serve double duty and sometimes triple duty so I never have to worry about sacrificing comfort for style. This packing of shoes process used to be a lot more difficult until I discovered passions but now it's easy and I love it. So we know that swapping different heels can completely change the look of the shoe so you can wear the same shoes to different types of occasions to work, to a work party, to a wedding. That's one way to think about it, but for me, I have more fun thinking about it from the outfit perspective. As in, how can I upgrade basic outfits using only a couple of shoes and interchangeable heels so that I can get more wear out of basic, boring clothes? Because if I'm being honest, styling clothes is not my forte. These are some examples of how I could keep the same basic outfit on, but style it with different shoe combos and accessories to change the look and therefore help me buy less clothes. I say buy less clothes because I'm already pretty good at whittling down my travel capsule wardrobe and not overpacking, but buying clothes to keep at home is another story. For this first outfit, I'm keeping it very basic. This is pretty much my everyday uniform, a black t-shirt and basic jeans or pants. I'm starting with the black Dior say paired with the brown one inch block heel to keep it casual for every day. I wanted to add a bit more texture to the outfit, so I added a black sweatshirt tied around my shoulders and switched into my knit booties with the matching 3 inch black heel. This is what I would wear if I wanted to look like I tried a little harder, but not too hard. Let's say I needed to spiff it up for evening, but didn't have time or energy to fully change. I put the sweatshirt all the way on. I'm tying in the shine from the belt buckle with my four inch sand rhinestone block heels. And I think this is a pretty good casual evening outlook. For this outfit, I'm wearing black leggings and a loose textured cutout tank top. I paired this with my black Dior Say flats for a cute and casual running around style. In the event that I need to pretend to have the illusion of professionalism, I'm tucking my top into my waistband and throwing on this plaid knit blazer. Then I'm switching into my brown booties with the one inch block heel so as not to be overly flashy. To liven up the outfit for evening, I'm using hair ties to scrunch up my sleeves for an edgier style. Then I'm tossing on my black Dior Says with black rhinestone three inch block heels to complete the look. I feel like I need to add some black eyeliner to this. I'm starting here wearing a white short sleeve shirt over a silk midi dress. I'm buttoning a couple of buttons and then tying the shirt up around my waist. I'm wearing that with my brown booties with black rhinestone three inch heels for a cute going to brunch kind of outfit. To change up the look, I'm going to unbutton the shirt and layer the sides in a wrap style underneath the belt. And I'm adding in my black Dior Says with brown three inch block heels. For this last look, I'm going to ditch the white shirt and let the dress shine on its own. But we can always use more shine, so I'm pairing the dress with my black Dior Says with 4 inch sand rhinestone heels. And I plan to grab a clutch because this outfit needs it, but I forgot to grab it for this clip, so you can just use your imagination and pretend I am holding a clutch. Seriously, I think passions are the way of the future. They will only get better as time goes on. And honestly, I don't think there will be any reason ever to own heels that are just heels. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe if you haven't already and tell me in the comments which passion style you have picked out. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Now that I'm looking back, I can see all the signs that